After three days he called together the local leaders of the Jews, and when they had gathered, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But because the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am wearing this chain. And they said to him, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken any evil about you. But we desire to hear from you what your views are. For with regard to this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. When they had appointed a day for him, they came to him at his lodging in greater numbers. From morning till evening he expounded to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. And some were convinced by what he said, but others disbelieved. And disagreeing among themselves, they departed after Paul had made one statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense, and welcomed all who came to him proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. And finally, Paul is in Rome. He's had quite an adventure along the way. He's met many people, been to many places, had many trials and tribulations, and had times where he's been loved, times where he's been hated, where he's been rich and he's been poor. But all of these have been God-given opportunities and divine interruptions. These have been times when he's been able to speak to people of influence. And he's been able to create a trail of inspiration, encouragement, and establishment of communities of faith that will go on to change the known world and ultimately to us here today. And so as I considered that, I was reminded of 1 John 4, where it says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Friends, we find ourselves today surrounded by fear and misinformation, by not knowing who to trust and where to go to. But John carries on and says this, For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. And if anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, then he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he can see, cannot love God, whom he can't see. And this commandment we have from him, Whoever loves God must love his brother. And as Paul says to all those who come to see him, and those who come to see him understand the truth of his words, that there is no case for him to answer. He was simply trying to help others to see that Jesus came in fulfillment of God's promise. And the only way to God is through the acceptance that Christ is the way and the truth and the life. Friends, I believe that that is speaking 
to us today. Paul reminds this church in Rome with these words, words that speak to us in this time of confusion and misinformation. In Romans 12, Paul writes, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, and by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Too easily we fall into the trickery of the world and the words that they say and the lies that they bring feed itchy ears. But I leave the final words to Paul as he pleaded with the people that God had brought to him. In the same way that I plead to you as God has brought you to this broadcast today. Paul is quoting from the prophet Isaiah. You will indeed hear but never understand. You will indeed see but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them, says the Lord. Therefore let it be known to you, says Paul, that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles as they will listen. I pray you will listen and hear, respond, and be assured of the God who is for you will never be against you. And if he is for you, then no one will rise against you. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father God, as we go through this difficult time of confusion, help us to recognize that you are the truth in the way, that you do have all things in the palm of your hand, that control ultimately is with you. Help us, Lord, to trust you and not turn to the left or to the right, but follow the path laid out for us. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and favour be on you and your household this day and forever. Amen. 